Are you a serious dinosaur collector? Do you want to improve your collection by buying only the best? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 7 of the Dinosaur Toy Review Show. Today we are going to review the Smilodon figures. Yes, today we'll be talking about Smilodon Fatalis. Before we get started, George, what is the fossil record that we're looking at on the Sabretooth? We have so many fossils of Smilodon Fatalis. Uh, Smilodon Fatalis is the most famous, but there is another type of species of Smilodon called Smilodon Populator, which is given that name because there are so many of them. You find them a lot in the La Brea Tar Pits in California. Some of you may be familiar with those. They are fossils that have been preserved in the sticky tar. Um, they have a wonderful lab out there that they have a special technique for cleaning that tar off the fossils, providing a fairly complete picture of the Smilodon skeleton. We have seven different figures to review today, George. Where would you like to get started? Well, let's get started with the mojo. So already off the bat, I really like the spots on this and the pose. Um, for those of you who don't know, the back legs of Smilodon were actually much shorter than the arms. So that meant that these guys weren't meant for running. Instead, they were meant for pouncing on prey. Um, the biggest feature on them, however, are going to be their saber teeth. And as we take a look at them, the proportions are correct. I will say, look at that uh, detail on the mouth. The way that the lips kind of hang off. It's very similar to modern day big cats. Let's look at the paws. All right, we've got the right number of fingers, even the little dew claws on the sides and the back. A little short bobcat-like tail. We don't know if they had a, a little bit of tuft of fur at the end, but we do know that they were really short like this. I would say this is a good figure. It even has the ears pointed backwards. For anybody who owns a cat, you know what that means. That means stand back. They're going to attack. I would say I, I really like this one. Uh, even the face. Uh, you got the little dots on the surrounding parts of the snout. And even a little bit of spots under the eyes. Which have a nice golden color. One of the things you mentioned was the proportion of the teeth. What are you looking for there? I'm looking for teeth that aren't too short or too big. Also not too thick. These teeth were sabers. Which means that they had a very thin edge. So they're not going to be too round and you can see that they did a great job showing that they're not very thick they're a good proportion and the length as well they needed to be long enough to perform their function which would have been to suffocate their prey but also short enough so that they can get a bite in what would you like to look at next george let's take a look at the popo smilodon now this is textbook smilodon look at that low crouching position the Arms are longer than the back legs, so that proportion is good. Let's take a look at the teeth. These teeth are slightly smaller than the other um, Smilodon, and they are very thick. So that is the proportion I was talking about before. They aren't blade-like in this figure. They're more tubular, and they don't have exactly a nice tip to them, but I know it's for safety reasons that they can't make them as sharp as they would have been in real life. They do have the ears pointed back, which again is a sign of aggression in cats. Have that dew claw pointing back, right amount of toes, and again, that little bobcat. And similarly, this one is painted black at the end. Let's take a look at the front. Kind of these wide golden eyes. This is a creature I did not want to mess with. It looks ready to pounce on you and look at those retractable claws as well that previous figure didn't have a good representation of claws being drawn in they were kind of drawn out so this is a stalking smilodon which i gotta say i do like the color of it very reminiscent of a puma what would you like to look at next george well we have another popo smilodon and this one is really really cool might be the male since it has a mane and the previous one didn't this one does have its claws drawn as you can see, so this one's already in attack mode. The proportions are good, and in fact, it's very muscular. I mean, look at those abs <laughs> and the muscles throughout the arm. Big cats are very muscular, so this is pretty conductive to how they would have been. Again, the teeth are very tubular. They probably wouldn't have been that thick on them, but look at the teeth in between. I love the attention to detail that the Popo figures give to, to teeth. That's pretty good. And got some yellow eyes. Ears pointed backwards, the right amount of toes, and that dew claw there. And that pose is just really nice. We've got that bobcat-like tail. 
And that mane is a really neat touch. I don't see many Smilodons with manes, so, um, and we wouldn't have known. That's what I was just about to ask. Is there any evidence to support this? It's possible. I won't rule it out, but most big cats do not have a mane. So I'd say it's training more towards them not having manes than them would. It is a very unique figure. It actually has been discontinued by Papos. So if you can find one anywhere and you're interested, you probably want to grab it as soon as you can. George, why don't we go to the small Papo figure next since we are in the Papo arena? This little guy is adorable. You can already see it's got uh, its saber teeth coming in and it looks a little scared. So maybe it's crouching down, hiding from a potential danger. Again, that little bobcat like tail is, is present with that dark tip. You've got the claws that are retracted and the paw is held at a nice pose. I really like that. And the coloration, again, very reminiscent of a puma. It's even got that black stripe going down the back of it. But again, I really do not like how thick these teeth are. They do not look like the saber teeth that they're most well known for. But other than that, the body and musculature of it is very well defined. This is the only young Smilodon figure available, so it is rather unique. What would you like to look at next, George? I picked up the Collect A Smilodon, so that'll be what's next. This one right off the bat, look at that spotted hide. You can see almost every individual tendril of hair. The saber teeth are there, and they look really nice and pointed. They are a little bit thicker than they would have been in life, but not as thick as the Papa ones. Pretty good job coloring in the teeth inside the mouth as well. You got the ears pointed back. It's again in a, a aggressive stance, probably roaring, which they probably would have roared. Um, if a lot of big cats like lions and tigers can roar, I don't see it out of the question of whether Smilodon could roar. Um, the claws are retracted, but they're visible, which I really like when they do that. It's a great attention to detail. Got the right amount of toes and that dew claw, which is great because when it comes to the accuracy of these uh, figures, we have a lot of modern day relatives to compare them to that we know about their basic biology and what to fill in the gaps of what we do not know. I would say I really like this one. The proportions of the arms and the legs are also there. Much longer arms and the back legs. It is a bit shaggier than the other figures, but it got cold back then. We're talking about the Ice Age, so I would say this is a good one. This is a pretty good interpretation of Smilodon. Let's do the Safari LTD figure. This one goes for a striped approach. It's a little bit smaller than the other figures. The teeth are good proportion. Uh, they are slightly shorter than others, mostly because of the lips wrapping around them. But I do like how that lip hangs on the bottom, just like in modern day cats. The claws are drawn, so it's ready to attack, and the ears are flattened as well, so there's that body language again. The back legs are a little bit bigger than in the other figures, so they're more proportionate to each other. And there, there's one thing that I've noticed about this one that isn't really shown in the other ones, and it's the whiskers. So that's a neat little detail there. The other ones have the little whisker uh, specks, but not the, not the stripes. I do like the striping on it, especially where it's placed on the back and the front. Reminds me of a, a thylacine or a Tasmanian tiger. That's pretty cool. I'd say this one's pretty decent. All right. I think we're going to have a tough, tough decision here. So far, I'm not hearing a lot of negative feedback on it's any of close. the models. We do have one final one to look at, and that is the Rebor figure. If you're standing, sit down. Oh, look at this, this monster. <laughs> All right. Let's take a closer look at it. I might have to back up a little bit. This is the Rebor Smilodon, and boy, is it something. I mean, just look how big it is compared to my hand. And I will say the saber teeth on these is sharp. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look at the mouth. Every tooth is individually colored. It even has that nice sheen, so you know it looks very wet. The ears are pulled back in that aggressive stance again. We've got the little pits for the whiskers. Uh, let's take a look at it head on. That is terrifying. I would not want to mess with this guy. If we look at the claws, they are retracted, just like a cat would, you know? Cats do not hold their claws out all the time when they walk around. So that's the sort of accuracy thing that I'm looking for. If we look at the proportion of the legs, the back legs are much shorter than the front legs. In fact, the front legs are very muscular, perfect for holding down struggling prey in order to clamp down on their throat and slice it, you know, as saber-toothed tigers do, or saber-toothed cats, excuse me. 
We don't know if they had stripes like tigers, so we can't call them tigers. That's a very common misnomer. Uh, we got that bob cat-like tail in the back. The texturing of it and the color are amazing. Like, it feels like I'm petting an actual, like, cat right now. <laughs> and I like that they have the little rosettes. That's interesting compared to the other figures we saw. They did not have rosettes. They had stripes or spots. But rosettes are more prominent in big cats today, like jaguars and leopards and cheetahs. This little rosette pattern you see is very common amongst them. So I'd say this is a more likely kind of patterning that they would have had. Even young lions have kind of this rosette pattern to help them camouflage from predators or other lions. I gotta say, this is a wonderful figure. This is this is definitely top of the line, isn't it? It is certainly the most expensive. <laughs> a couple questions. One, can you just define rosette for the uninformed? A rosette is a rose-like pattern seen in animals, and it kind of just looks like a flower. That is the kind of pattern that that you see on these uh, these cats, that sort of flower-like pattern that helps blend in with their surroundings, whether they're hiding in plants, if they're trying to blend in with the sunset, which is why a lot of big cats hunt near sunset or dawn, and why most of them end up being tan or orange. And one feature of this model, which is truly unique, is it comes with two different heads. All right, people at home, don't scream. Uh, I'm not breaking, I promise. So you just do a little wiggle there. The head comes off. And then in comes a new head. And it just slots on like so. And so the difference is closed mouth or open mouth? Ooh. Well, everybody likes an open mouth figure. But I personally like the closed mouth figure. Uh, mostly because it really shows that length of the saber teeth going past its chin. Which, uh, fun fact, saber tooth cats didn't really have what we know as chins. I know I said chin, but I meant lower jaw. They had a, a lack of that lower chin bone, which was probably an adaptation to help accommodate their saber teeth. I personally like the closed a little bit better. But the fact that it gives you two different options is truly unique. Yes, so for people that like it with the mouth open, you do have that option, or the closed mouth. I personally really like both, but I'm more of a closed mouth figure person myself because Animals don't walk around with their mouths open all the time, but it is a great pose when they do have it open. All right, George, mugshot time. Anything jumping out at you on the faces that we haven't discussed already? Yes. Now that they're side by side, I think it's easier to see what I meant about the thickness and proportion of the teeth. See, these tube-like teeth, they're not really accurate when it comes to those sabers, but these pointed, more triangular, thinner teeth are. So as we line them up, it's really clear to see which ones are more saber tooth like than the others. I gotta say, Papo did not really do well in this in this category. Their teeth look like bananas. Rebor for sure has the best example of what the saber teeth should look like. A close second would probably be the the Mojo figures teeth or the uh, Collect A. If we look at them from the front, George, I put the roaring one in here for scale since I couldn't get them all in one picture. Anything jumping out at you? Yes, the posing. A lot of them have that same crouched position except for the Papa one that's retired, which is a shame because it's very unique amongst all the other ones. All of them kind of have the crouched position where they're about to swipe at something, but only the Papo and I guess the Safari one have their paw lifted. As for the, the Rebor one, even the Rebor one doesn't have that Pose. It kind of follows that same trend of them all crouching. It's probably what they did the most, you know? Bellies? Bellies. Oh, wow. So this is something that I didn't really touch on in the video that I typically touch on other videos is that kind of counter shading. Counter shading not only works in the water, but it also works on land. Whenever you're trying to hide, your outer coat needs to match your environment. Well, your bottom coat doesn't necessarily have to. So looking at these figures, the the Rebor one and the Papa ones are pretty dark, but when you look at the Safari Collect A and Mojo ones, they're pretty light, um, which is very much what modern cats coloration are like. Here's looking at the coats and the textures. The patterns are all different on these Smilodons. Some of them have no pattern at all, like the young Papo and the regular Papo, but the roaring Papo that's discontinued does have some striping on its limbs, which I think is, looks really cool. Oh, when we look at the Safari one, it does have those stripes, but not to the same level of detail as the Papo. The Mojo and the Collect A both follow the spotting patterns that we see. 
in some cats today but i think the rebar takes the cake with the patterning with those rosettes those flower like patterns of spots i think that is the most accurate when it comes to the coats feet all right so as we know cats can retract their claws and i think all of these figures did a really good job at showing that the only exceptions being the safari and the papa ones because they are in, in an attacking position their claws are drawn because they are clawing at something so I'd say they all pass on that. And then let's take a look at the foot pads. See, I was counting toes and I wasn't really looking at the foot pads, but the foot pads on the pop, Roaring Papa looked really good. They actually look a lot more like cat paws than most of the other ones do. I will say that the Rebor one, though, is even better than the Papa one in that aspect. The Safari one really leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to that foot padding. Uh, the Mojo one's pretty decent, though. So decision time, George. If money is no object, I think it's pretty clear who the uh, winner of that category would be. The Rebor Smilodon is amazing. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> that That is my choice. So the Rebor one is almost 10 times more expensive as the least expensive Safari LTD figure, with the other ones being in the middle. In terms of value, George, which one would you think would be an acceptable model? I, I got to go with the Collect A one. That one... Price points, accuracy-wise, in terms of, you know, having it be a very accurate figure and the coloration, the paint, the texture, the saber teeth, I would say that's my pick. And I actually agree with that also. If I couldn't afford the Rebor one, that is the one that I would go with. It's a pretty nice one. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.